Jean-Claude Blanc has worked for Juventus and PSG, two of Europe's biggest clubs, and he's gained a huge reputation from both. He's known for his financial acumen, his vision for clubs, and his ability to execute them. He is also the CEO of Ineos Sport, the group owned by Jim Ratcliffe, who's set to buy a 25% stake in Man United. In this video, I will explore Blanc's career so far and discuss how his experiences make him an ideal candidate to become United's new CEO in charge of transforming the club's structure, strategy, and culture. I'll also analyze the challenges and opportunities he would face if he became United's new CEO. Let's talk about it. Let's rewind to the very beginning, before Blanc even got involved in football, and he was involved in the business side of sports. He has an international business and marketing degree from the France-based Schema Business School and also holds a Master of Business Administration from none other than Harvard. Yeah, Harvard. For five years, Blanc was the sales and marketing manager and the opening and closing ceremony director for the 1992 Winter Olympics in his home region. And in 94, Blanc became the CEO of Amoy Sport Organization and Media. And in his six years as CEO, he boosted the revenue, created an international audience, and also created L'Equip, which is a famous TV network in France that still exists. And from 2001 to 2006, Blanc served as the CEO for the French Tennis Association. Under his supervision, Roland Garros saw unprecedented levels of success thanks to innovative ideas, such as beginning the tournament on a Sunday instead of a Monday, in order to add an extra weekend of Grand Slam tennis. So before he ventured into football, Blanc had built his education and also built his foundations for what has been a stellar career in football since. And he first, I suppose, built his reputation that you know about at Juventus. Blanc became Juventus CEO in 2006 during the club's most unstable period in history as it was relegated to Serie B during that scandal. At that time, he was responsible for marketing, revenue, sponsorships and costs. That was where he was going to help Juventus get through this period. And he did it. Between 2006 and 2009, he played a leading role in rebuilding their financial stability. He streamlined revenue streams, renegotiated player and business contracts in order to cut costs and rebuilt the club's technical staff. After a couple of seasons, Juve were breaking even whilst also having a significant amount of money to spend on players. Speaking about his time at the club, the Swiss Ramble said, although Blanc has attracted criticism for not being a football man, it has to be remembered that he took control of Juventus during the most turbulent period in the club's history. The meltdown on the pitch could easily have been accompanied by financial disaster off it, but Blanc and his team managed to steady the ship and restore confidence. And the best example of Blanc's forward thinking at Juventus comes to do with their new stadium. Blanc secured funding for a new 41,000-seater stadium, and that would be crucial in giving Juve the ability to compete financially with Europe's elite. Juventus actually became the first Italian club to fully own their stadium. And Blanc was really smart in getting that 120 million he needed to build that stadium for Juventus. First, he sold the naming rights for 12 years for a sum of 75 million euros, sold a bit of commercial land adjacent to the stadium for 20 million euros, and a 12-year loan for 60 million euros. Altogether, it gave Juve what they needed to build their new stadium. And now, Juve, from that scandal, from the relegation, Blanc had guided them through that period with financial stability and also modernization with that new stadium that has helped carry Juventus through right until now. But it didn't all go perfectly for Blanc at Juve. In 2009, he was made the club's president and then had more control over footballing decisions it didn't work out. He oversaw an abysmal season and in May 2010, Andrea Agnelli actually stepped into the role of president and Jean-Claude Blanc was demoted back down to CEO. And then in October 2011, Blanc actually tendered his resignation, but he felt his time there absolutely was overall a massive success in guiding Juventus through that period, building that new stadium and leaving the club in a significantly stronger position than when he first came in. And next up for Blanc was another huge project. And this time, of course, it was PSG. In 2011, Qatar Sports Investment purchased PSG with the goal of turning that club into one of the global powerhouses. And they hired Blanc as their general manager. At PSG, he spent 12 years solely focusing on building the brand, making PSG a marketing behemoth. And he was absolutely successful. Blanc leveraged the worldwide reputation of Paris and made the club and the city synonymous. Under Blanc, PSG struck a deal with Nike for Air Jordan to become the club's kit manufacturer, which has seen PSG shirts become more of a fashion item than a football shirt, as they are worn by high-profile celebrities all around the world. PSG 
was a fashion statement now, as much as it was a football club. During his 12 seasons at the club, of course, PSG had success on the pitch. PSG have won more than 20 trophies. But Blanc's success is about the business side of things, and this is what he said about his time at PSG. It is more than simply winning trophies, it is to build a sporting property. The ambition is not to be the last of the great clubs, not to catch up with Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man United, but to be, and with humility, the first great club of the digital era. We are lucky to be in a moment of social media when globalization of information is instantaneous. At PSG, Blanc had cemented his status as a modern football executive. He had guided Juventus through that tumultuous period and left them on a good ground on which they've built on. And at PSG, he's helped them become one of the behemoths of the new digital era. It might not be an area that you like, but it's the way football has gone. And Blanc has an excellent reputation at multiple clubs of doing just that. And his next job is what I suppose brings him closer to Manchester United, because in December 22, Ineos confirmed that Blanc would be the CEO of their sport and oversee the whole profile covering Formula One, football, sailing, cycling, everything under the Ineos regime would now be controlled by Jean-Claude Blanc. And inside this role in Ineos, he's been responsible for the development of state-of-the-art facilities for each of the teams that they own, developing their business plans and growing the global brand. Everything that he has learned and shown at Juventus and at PSG, of course. And because of his position as the CEO of Ineos Sport, of course he's been linked with the United job. But it's not just a marriage of convenience. He would be an excellent, arguably the best candidate for the job. He absolutely loves sport, but he loves the business side of sport. And that is where his strengths lie. Speaking about what sport was when he first came into the business, he said this, in the 1980s, sport was a tiny sector in which I had no connections, but the idea that a significant business side could develop around sports always guided me. Not many Harvard graduates go into sport. I've never met one, but my profound conviction was sport. Blanc really has got a superb CV from his time before sport uh, with the uh, French Tennis Association, the Winter Olympics, to his time Obviously, his education at Harvard, his time at Juve in steadying the ship. He built relationships. He built a modern football club there in Juventus. And he did the same thing at PSG. He's done it all from the business side of things, but also from the personal side of things. Because he does have a track record of managing people very well. And the example of Gianluigi Buffon at Juventus is a really strong one. When Buffon wanted to leave after Juve were relegated, Blanc helped convince him to stay. And he explained exactly how he did it after the fact. He said, we did a presentation for Buffon in the big trophy hall. We did the same work as for convincing a sponsor to join us. We built a presentation around him, why he was significant in the club's history, why he would be the next captain, why we were gonna to return to the top of Serie A and win everything. Why he would play another Champions League final, the place of the goalkeeper in Juve's history and why he was fairly central to our project. And of course, Buffon stayed. And that was down in no small part to Blanc building that vision for him and man united we need somebody who can build a vision and execute a vision and blanc has a track record of that at multiple clubs and at different levels too when it comes to concerns i suppose there's two really around blanc first of all how can he do his role at ineos as a ceo of sport and be a ceo of manchester united i don't personally think he can i think he has to step away from that role and i imagine if he does come in at united that will have to happen and also when he became president at Juventus and sort of took control more of the footballing side of things, it didn't really work. But that there is not really a, 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 less, a concern, more of a lesson in, you know, you need the right structure around you. But Jean-Claude Blanc is really not just, ah, somebody who works for Ineos. Ah, oh, that'll be easy enough. Bring him in with Ratcliffe. From his education, from his early career, from Juventus through to PSG and what he's doing at Ineos now, he is a modern footballing executive with bags of experience and doing different things at clubs, whether it's modernizing a club stadium or whether it's modernizing a club into the digital era. He's done both and he would be an excellent appointment at Manchester United. I hope this video has helped you to understand more about who Jean-Claude Blanc is and exactly why I think you should be excited about the idea of him coming in and leading the vision at our football club going forward.